gardening. I was out here in the garden this morning. It is an early morning. It is our trash day. So I pulled some stuff up out of the garden that had died, withered out. Um, I would like some of my plants to go to seed so that I can collect seeds from them. But it does take quite a, quite a bit of time allowing your plants to go to seed. So what I did, I just went ahead and pulled them up because I want to get some seeds some things that I direct so I want to get them down into the beds into the soil I want to get some stuff amended and um, I have some crops some transplants that I want to get in the ground um, so that they can go ahead and get acclimated to the weather outside um, because we do have our frost coming at the end of October beginning of November so I definitely want them to get adjusted to being outside and the cooler temperatures so I am um, out here today because I did have a bed that I pulled some stuff up um, out of last week. And so I had the bed just kind of sitting here until I was able to get it cleaned and get uh, the soil turned over, mix some nutrients around in there, pull up some of the uh, roots that were left from the previous crop. And um, so I did that um, last week and then I cleaned it and got it turned over and everything as I stated just a minute ago. Um, but what I did was I planted a row of the Ford Hook uh, Giant Swiss Chard on the back row and then on the side at the front I planted some Olympia Hybrid Spinach and then in the middle of the front row I planted um, some seeds for bunching onions. Um, Swiss chard, spinach, and onion grow very well. Those are um, in the brassica family. And the onions, allowing the onions to grow in the middle of them, will keep the bugs from getting onto the crop as they're growing out. Um, it'll keep the bugs from eating up the leaves and damaging the crop. Um, as you can see here, this is the bed that I'm talking about. And what I did do was, um, if you go back to look at my Facebook page, City Girl Garden, you'll see that I have some videos up talking about the uh, PVC pipe and how I hoop my beds, preparing them for the fall and winter time. Um, I also use the hoop when I want to create the greenhouse effect for my beds um, without, when I direct sow them. Um, because the temperatures are going down, um, some of the soil in the early morning it does need to kind of heat up a little bit and i did put the seeds in in the cooler part of the morning so what i did do was i put down my um rebar i buy the uh, 12 inch metal rebar from lowe's i put them down two on each end and one in the middle for the middle hoop and then this is the um it's not pvc it is plex PEX piping, it's cheaper than the PVC and it is more flexible and bendable, so it is better for me. Uh, I like it a lot better than the PVC piping. Um, I do have PVC piping on the beds at the back of the garden because our neighbor does um, heating and air and they have a lot laying around in their yard and um, whenever I just ask for some, um, they're more than uh, willing to give me some and I just hoop those beds in the back with the uh, PVC piping and of course those those um, the ones that I get from the neighbor they're usually about 10 to 12 foot uh, long so I do have a little I can bend it a lot easier uh, than I would be able to do, to do uh, 5 feet PVC piping but this is the PEX piping here it is bendable um, I did purchase this on a roll the roll I think it was either 50 feet or 100 feet um, of the PEX piping and it was like 25 maybe $30 from the Lowe's and I was able to get a PEX um, pipe cutter and I cut it the length that I needed to make my hoops uh, that I use throughout the summer, the fall, winter, uh, whenever with the garden and I need them. So I did put my 12 inch uh, metal rebar um, down into the beds and then I took the PEX piping and put them over the rebar to create the hoop. And this right here is one of the dollar clear shower curtains from the Dollar Tree. 
I purchased that when it was a dollar. Now, if you go into the Dollar Tree, there will be a dollar and twenty-five. Uh, but I did purchase this from the Dollar Tree. Um, I stocked up on them last year, and um, I had one still available in the house. And I put it over the bed to create the greenhouse effect to help my soil warm up and to create the greenhouse effect for um, the seeds that I put down. And again, in this bed, you can see it here. I did put a uh, Swiss chard along the back row here. I put Swiss chard. On this side at the front, I put spinach. This side at the front, I put spinach. And in the middle front, I put the bunching onions to help repel the bugs from the crop. I do also um, have, I did come out this morning as well, and I did uh, separate my third round of squash um, my first round of squash um, it didn't do so well with the high temperatures that we had towards the uh, in the summertime it didn't do well a lot of the plants um, with watering and um, the leaves burned the crops um, they didn't get germinated uh, they kind of withered in the heat so I did a second round my second round I did harvest a good bit for my second round however I did have a lot of vine borer damage so I have sown a third round of squash because squash this squash will germinate and grow and I should be able to reap a harvest from them um, before our scheduled frost which is the end of November uh, beginning uh, excuse me the end of October beginning of November um, squash usually takes about 60 65 days and so with me planting them getting the seeds in on last week um, and getting the soil worked and get more nutrients in and cleaning the soil um, I still have time because they have germinated and as you can see here this is one of my yellow scallop squash over here was I sowed some custard English squash. It's kind of like a scallop squash. This one had not germinated, so I did put down two more seeds in here and watered it really good. So I'm hoping those will come up sometime this week. But as you can see, the ones that I did sow on last week, they did come up. This is a, a custard English scallop squash. Here I have my golden egg squash. It germinated very well and it actually both seeds and this one germinated and so what I did was I did pull up I did uh, pull up one I used a spoon to uh, scoop it up to make sure I did not damage the roots and I transplanted it over here into this pot where I sown also the golden egg squash and none of these seeds germinated so I transplanted the one next to it that had two in it i transplanted this one over in here this morning watered it down really good you can see here my yellow um scallop squash it germinated and this one these actually germinated they both germinated uh two there was two in here i transplanted one of those into another pot and then the one next to it as well is a yellow scallop squash this was one of the transplants from the yellow scallop squash and then down there I had at the end of the bed was a yellow scallop squash so I have been out working uh, this morning early morning as you can see here I did start this bed here on a couple weeks ago so I do have some of the mustard seeds that have sprouted out and grown really big well I had spots that the seeds did not germinate so I went back in and laid more seeds as you can see I laid more and so now I just have to get those separated um, and thinned out I'm gonna let them grow out just a little bit more see which ones are the healthier ones and pull the ones that are not so healthy so I do have that and also in this bed I do have a um, this is a delicata squash here it will grow up this vine and um, out of all the corn seeds that I put in here I had about two or three that did germinate but I pulled those because they were very little and weak and I do have this one that's growing and was pretty strong so I have one corn stalk there growing in that same bed with the squash and with the um, 
mustard greens. So we're going to see how the corn does. Just one corn stalk there. Um, and the squash, the delicata squash, and then I have the um, mustard greens in the bed. You can see here, as I was stating before, the higher beds that have the hoops, those are hooped with the metal rebar. And then I hooped the PVC piping that uh, I got from my neighbor. I hooped those beds. Um, and see, those beds will house my bigger brassicas, such as the broccoli, the cauliflower, um, collard greens. There's something else I wanted to put in here. My kale, uh, different varieties of kale. And um, I'm going to get some salad. Salad and... Um, I'll probably do some more greens, um, either turnips. I'll probably do some turnip greens, um, put them down in the beds. But those are, that's what I'm gonna use with the higher hoop beds. And then this long bed that goes on here, it will house um, some type of crop, but I'll use that as well as to create the greenhouse effect on the smaller bed that has the hoops there. It's a six, it's a eight foot, a two by eight foot bed. So um, I am going to use that bed as well uh, for some of my fall crops. But uh, I am D, your City Girl Gardener. You can see here in the backyard, I do still have uh, some tomatoes growing. I have my trellis back over here. That's back over here. It has the asparagus bean growing up it. It has a delicata squash and it does have a few of the um, burpee hybrid um corn on the deck uh plants in them those corn plants will only grow maybe about two feet if that high and they will produce a lot they're a container variety um so i planted those there so that they would have a chance to grow and i would hopefully be able to harvest from those that are in this bed over here with the trellis, you can see the beans back here kind of growing up those. And then of course, down this row here, you can see I have in this first bed here, I have uh, more beans. Um, some of them are the asparagus bean or the, no, those are the tender, some tender green beans. And I do have a butternut squash in the middle that will go up that trellis here in this bed. And the last bed back there, is my sweet potato bed and um, so I do have some of my fall crops and things that I have going in and I do have a trellis here but there's nothing on the trellis I installed that trellis there a couple weeks back and I did do a video on that so you can check out some previous videos and then on the end I have my two Cherokee purple tomatoes that are still growing and uh, they have some on that are um, Hopefully that'll be getting a little bit bigger and they will start to um, turn their purple reddish color. And then I do have bell peppers and more tomatoes over there and cherry tomatoes as well. So I am clearing stuff out, but I do have some stuff that is still uh, producing from the spring and summer garden. Um, I'm going to turn around and let you see the girls. They are out this morning. You can see again they knocked over their food so i pulled it out this morning so i'm gonna fill that up for them but they are out there down here and then i don't know if you can see but you can see um that is lily coot lily coot is up right here she's up on the nesting box she's just perched up on top of the nesting box I came out to check and see if I had an egg. I didn't have any eggs, but I will make sure that uh, I am on the lookout for the eggs because I do know that they will be laying, hopefully soon, because they've just started displaying the signs. And um, I'm ready for some eggs. Uh, eggs have gotten exceptionally high, too high. A 18 count when I was in the grocery store over the weekend it was five dollars and like 90 something cents and I just thought that was so ridiculous because I remember uh, last year about this time even at the beginning of the year I would like to say uh, a 18 count of eggs was like two dollars and something um, a 12 count was maybe a dollar nineteen dollar twenty five at the most 
and now a 12 count also has gotten exceptionally high and it is almost like four dollars for a 12 count or maybe three dollars and something for a 12 count because the 18 count was like five dollars six dollars basically but these are the girls uh this morning and i'm gonna give you guys another view of the garden this is another one of the trellises that i did install and in this one um i purchased these this is some fence posts some fancy fence posts that I purchased from um, Lowe's. It has an arrow point head down up under the soil where it, it arrow heads down into the ground um, so that it is sturdy. And this one is about five feet and I sewed. And this one, um, this is a um, zucchini, green zucchini, black beauty zucchini. And then on this trellis, I do have here a uh, spaghetti squash. I sowed over here last week butternut squash. None of them germinated. So this morning while I was out, I did sow uh, about two, three more seeds for the um, butternut squash. So hopefully those guys will germinate. And if they all germinate, then I'll be able to kind of separate them and, and put them at some of the other trellises around the garden. Um, but I have butternut squash here. And then again, you can see another one of those fancy fence posts with the arrow head uh, for, to go down into the ground. And then here again, I do have the um, another of the Black Beauty uh, zucchini. And this was the bed that I was telling you guys about with the trellis with the asparagus beans. And I have a delicata squash here that has flowered here. Uh, so hopefully I'll be seeing some fruit come up on that. So I have my asparagus bean here. I have the delicata squash here. I have some little fancy lights that I did attach to this trellis to uh, create a little beauty um, and lights in the garden. So I'm working on the aesthetics of the garden as well. Uh, getting some lights out here, um, just having the, the effect of sitting out in the garden some evenings. And um, as I was stating, I did put the corn, so I have some corn here that I do have kind of leaned up and kind of supported on some of the bamboo sticks. And then I did sow some beans because beans supply um, the nitrogen that the corn needs, um, that corn loves. And so not only did I have the asparagus bean back at the back on the trellis, I did put down some of the tricolor beans which are the purple burgundy beans, the um, the um, yellow wax beans, and then I did the um, tender greens. So um, I do have those, you can see here, uh, throughout the corn. And I have them so that they can supply some um, needed nitrogen to the corn. And then in this trellis bed here, which um, I do have here, this is straight neck squash. I sold that also on last week and it germinated. Uh, two of them germinated here. So I took one from here and transplanted it over here to this side of the bed because the seeds that I put down last week didn't germinate. So I transplanted from this one that where both seeds germinated here, I transplanted it here. So. This is the garden, and these are still some of the uh, tomatoes. I have a hornworm somewhere in here, and I have not been able to find it, but I know it's here because, as you can see, it is eating up this plant. So I am going to have to really get in there and look for that hornworm. But I have some of the cherry tomatoes here. Yep, some of the cherry tomatoes here. And then I have still some, um, and I know it's here because look, there is poop. Poop here at the top of this bell pepper. And when they're on your plant and they're up high and they're pooping, it falls down onto your crop so you can tell that there's a hornworm. And I'm definitely going to have to find that thing. But I do still have some tomatoes that are trying to grow. I still have this cherry tomato here. 
and then I have more bell peppers here more bell peppers here I have some black pearl uh, cherry tomatoes that are still growing on this one and then here are the um, Cherokee purple tomatoes that I was telling you guys all about and they are here so this is the garden I'm going to get inside so that I can get cleaned up and I can get started um, on work work from home so this is the garden I'm D your city girl gardener thanks for tuning in go to my Facebook page city girl gardening or ch check me out on YouTube at city girl gardening 803 like share subscribe comment give me some feedback but this is my garden Thanks for tuning in.